Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2 in non-spoiler form of the new Apple TV series entitled Slow Horses. This uh, series stars Gary Oldman and Krista Stock Scott Thomas, along with a few other uh, new faces to me. I mean, they may be well known uh, in other places of the globe, but uh, as far as I know, these other faces seem virtually new. Uh, feel free to correct me, as I'm sure any of you will <laughs> gladly do if these are uh, very well-known actors. But um, it's based on a novel by a guy named Mick Heron or Mick Heron. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name because uh, there's no <laughs> pronunciation when you're reading. But um, it's basically a spy thriller. And uh, the I, I don't want to say the catch, but uh, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> the catch is that these agents are rejects from MI5, which uh, it's... I have come to understand seems to be like the British version of the CIA and uh, these guys and gals made grievous errors ac uh, <laughs> across their their careers and they were sent to this place called the Slough House which is where they house these agents that are kind of like rejects from from MI5 you know the people who made the caliber of mistakes that they did and they uh, basically are there just doing like grunt work you know like and and they're led by Gary Oldman's character, his name's Jackson Lamb. He's like this gruff, gross bum who like, a, a, a bum because like, he just, he doesn't really do shit. He just kind of like chills out and drinks all day and just uh, takes the piss as they like to say. Uh, and, and just gives these guys shit like all the time. And, it, and the show is kind of like a, uh, I, I think the best way to put it is that even though it, it's not, the cast isn't as large or anything like that. It feels almost kind of like a spy version of Ocean's Eleven. Like, you have unique characters who all bring something unique in their own way, whether that's their via their own personal backstories or via uh, the type of character that they are. Like, they have a tech guy who he's a certain way. Like, there's a lot of things I don't want to spoil because I think it's good to come across these things throughout the course of watching these two episodes. But, you know, they have, a, a like I said, this tech guy that has his own way about him. There's a, a pair of people who are going out of their way to avoid another guy who seems very needy. Uh, we have yet to find out very much about any of those three, only a little bit. And the main character is a guy named River Cartwright, who at the beginning of the series, we find out how he ends up being sent to Slough House. And he seems to kind of be mostly aligned with this other character named Sid, who is a, who's female. That I only mention that because they make it a point in one of these episodes to point out that someone else assumed that Sid was a man. So that's why I'm pointing that out. But um, it seems to mainly revolve around those two and all the surrounding characters. Uh, it's been fun over the course of these just these two episodes to learn the little bit that we did about the supporting characters. And that was something that I was kind of prepared to come on here and go, this is what this show needs to focus on going forward. Because as interesting as the main plot or what what appears to be the main plot is the idea of how these people ended up where they ended up is prevalent within this show and i like finding out these backstories as to how these people got here and it'll be even more satisfying if these backstories somehow tie in with the main narrative as for the premise of the show like i said it starts with this guy river cartwright he gets sent down for uh messing up a mission that you get to see at the very beginning of the first episode and while he's there, he's being sent to do work that seems menial, but he ends up discovering that it seems like it's, it, it's tied in with what's actually happening at MI5 over in Regent Park. And he's wondering, okay, what, if we're such castaways, why are we doing something that seems to be tied in with what they're doing? And throughout this, throughout the course of these two episodes, a little bit of this starts to unravel uh, a Muslim uh, uh, a writer, I guess a comic writer is taken hostage we don't know why yet but he's taken hostage by some right-wing nationalists and we're trying to figure out one why they took him two what's going to happen three trying to stop it and then also we're getting this backstory filled in over who these people are and where they came from and why they're there so you tie that in you got your spy element which i'm totally here for you got a spy show and then you got like you know a little bit of humor 
unique characters and this extra bit of story about why these people are are where they are and i found this show to be really really entertaining like i, I love spy spy stuff but I, I found it to be really entertaining so far i found the characters to be unique and interesting the only thing that I, that's bugged me a little bit so far is when you look at this british humor this this it's drier it's snappy it's witty most of the time but then you get moments like there's like a fart joke in each of the first two episodes and I absolutely loathe fart jokes because I just feel like they're just like the most basic uh just you, you just have nothing if you're doing fart jokes like you have nothing and there's a couple of fart jokes in these first two episodes one a piece and like that that shit you I'll pass on that but other than that I found this show to be very entertaining. I was really, really interested in what was happening in these first two episodes. I, I thought it was funny I, at, at times, obviously, aside from fart jokes. And I thought the premise is interesting. I'm curious to see the spy aspect of it, like how they're going to unravel whatever it is that's going on, how twisted this thing is. It's probably going to go up way up to the top like they do in most things. Although I would like to see something a little bit unique, though. But, you know, when you have these spy things, there's always like big reveals and twists and turns. So I'm looking forward to that. But then you also have the comedic element, the lighthearted element, and then the backstory about the characters. So like there's a lot of really good things going on here that I'm really looking forward to seeing. So uh, my plan right now is to cover this show. We've got, from what I've read, it's supposed to be six episodes now based on this first book and then six episodes later based on a second book. So I plan on covering all 12 uh, obviously, as is the as is my routine, as I go forward, the uh, the reviews will start to be uh, more in depth and spoiler. Just so you know, for those of you who are watching watching along, we can actually get in depth about okay, what what have we found out? What's going on here? What do you guys think is happening? It's always good to have like these shows where you can theorize, and then you get people in the comments that are like, oh, this is what I think is happening. This is what I think is happening. But the problem is when it's based on a book, you'll get people who think this is what is happening but they know what's happening so like it would be cool if you're one of those people who've read the book please don't fucking spoil it for me or pretend like you're guessing when you know what happens but um otherwise yeah i plan on covering this one this looks like a fun one uh i think it comes out on fridays which are already jam-packed for me as as evidenced by the fact that i'm putting this out on a monday and it aired on friday i try to do things either same day or next day but, I mean, I got Severance on Friday, although next next Friday, this upcoming Friday, I should say, will be the last uh, Severance episode. Um, I got Atlanta, which comes on Thursday nights, which I do that do that one on Friday. I've got Pachinko on Friday. Uh, last Days of Ptolemy Gray just ended, I believe. So, um, after I watch this last episode, I should be done there. So, I guess this one can slide in and make like three or four things uh, that, that I recover on Fridays. But I'm willing to take on uh, the extra extra work just because like i like uh these friday releases especially apple tv man like what are you doing right now like they it's like it's almost like they heard everyone saying that hbo max is is kind of taking over this industry and they're like no 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 wait we were just we were just getting our feet wet let's really show you guys what we got so uh I, i'm gonna be covering this i'm gonna be looking at uh tokyo vice which premieres on hbo max i believe on thursday of this week uh, I'll be checking that out. So Thursday, I'll have coverage of both Snowfall and probably Tokyo Vice. And a cat just walked by my window. I, I hate that. I hate this. I don't know why I'm whispering like a gimme. I hate this fucking cat. It's like this neighborhood cat. And it's like big as shit. It almost looks like a raccoon. And it's constantly like on my property, just like pacing around my house and shit. I hate this fucking cat. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's all I got for now. I'll be back next Friday or Saturday to talk about episode three. But... Just to wrap it up, I highly recommend you watch this show. It looks like it's going to be a really good time. So until then, peace.